This is Kingdom Radio. This is Kingdom Radio with your hosts, Ron and Laura Roby. Next guest, right? Yeah. He's an ordained minister and the most recognized Christmas professional in the industry. He's the co-owner of the number one Christmas Facebook group, Christmas Light Contractor. He's a man of God and our personal friend. Give it up for Mr. Fred Zimmerman. Hey, how's it going? All right, Fred. So I know that you're in the Christmas business and your roots are getting deep entrenched into the Christmas business, but can you walk us through like the early stages of when you first got into the Christmas business? Yeah, so that's part of why we have our group. It's because I did a lot of stuff the wrong way, and it took me years to really get going because I was doing it like the way most people do. You just kind of... Yeah, I actually learned from a guy that I was trying to win to the Lord. (laughs) I worked for a roofing company as a door knocker. Isn't that a canvasser? Uh, Yeah, yeah. So you guys got those down in Texas a bunch. Uh, Now I live in Connecticut. They don't have hell in this part of the country. But I would get paid 25 bucks every time I'd get them on the roof. And then the salesman would get uh, 500 bucks every time they signed a contract if they found hell damage. So they always paired me with this guy. Well, this guy, he invited me over to his house one night for dinner. So I went over, and then he's like the top salesman for a roofing company. And sitting there for an hour or two, and then we're, we're eating dinner. His wife would cook. And then I started talking about the Bible a little bit and the book of Revelation. And he gets up from the table, and he, he opens the front door. He's like, okay, you can leave. We don't talk about the Bible in this house. So I was like, oh. okay. So, <laughs> wow. Anyways, long story short, I basically became his friend, and I, I knew I couldn't talk about the Bible with him because he would just end the conversation. So... I was like, well, you know, God wants this person to go to heaven, but I can't talk about the Bible, so I guess I'm just going to try to be the best friend I can be without talking about the Bible. And then at one time, it was a winter. He had been hanging life for like 10 years, and he's like, hey, I'll show you what roofers do in the winter and make an extra buck. And we went to his house, and he had a piece of paper like already on his computer from the year before, but it's just a, a flyer that says, we'll hang your life for a dollar a foot for one story, two dollars a foot for two story, and that's, that's how it all started. Wow. That's why I say when, when the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. I wasn't like trying to figure out how to make a better living. I was just like, hey, I think God wants this person to go to heaven. This guy doesn't want to hear nothing out of the Bible. So what do I got to do? Well, you just got to do whatever you feel that God would want you to do in that situation. In that situation, I was like, well, I just got to be this guy's friend without talking about Jesus. It's going to be a little tough, but I'm just going to be his friend. And that ended up opening the door to my whole future. You're listening to Fred Zimmerman on Kingdom Radio. But that experience right there, that's a seed that's planted earlier in your career when you start your Christmas business. But that also plays out over and over again in your career where, hey, this is business and talking about the Bible, there's not a place for that here. You have to choose one or the other. But once you become a business owner, you have the opportunity because you're not a canvasser for a roofing company anymore. Now you're Fred Zimmerman who owns your own company. You have a partner, Donovan, but you have your own company. And now you can talk about whatever you want to. But still, we kind of figure out like there's this hat that's a business owner and there's this hat that's a Christian. And when you're wearing both hats, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's actually harder, isn't it? Yeah, I've been turned into the state for talking about the Bible while I'm working by, by my employees and trying to say that's discriminating or whatever. But I, I try to be as fair as I can to everyone. And if, I mean, you get good workers that aren't Christians. So I don't know. It's tough. Like, yeah, I still haven't figured everything out. I don't think anyone's got everything figured out. On this side of glory, you're still in the learning Work curve. Work in progress. Yeah. You know, here in our business, we pride ourselves in offering an authentic Christmas experience to our customers. Like, there's a difference between decorating your house yourself and having a professional contractor do it. There's just a difference. There's also a difference if you have commercial grade products versus having store bought lighting. There's a difference. And there should be a difference if someone chooses your company 
versus any other company. So that's why we try to offer an authentic Christmas experience. Our guys, they wear Santa Claus hats. They have a smile on their face. We created a radio station, Kingdom Radio, that plays Christmas music. So while they're installing, it's playing Christmas music and you can have an authentic experience like when you're decorating the tree in your house and there's Christmas music playing. Just because the roof is so steep and the homeowner can't get up there doesn't mean that we need to water down the Christmas experience for them. We want the Christmas music going. We want joy in the face of our installers. We want Santa yeah. Claus hats like we're from the North Pole. And we want an authentic Christmas experience and that's how the guys that work for us, we put Christ back in Christmas day by day, and they also share the joy and they share the light of Christmas everywhere they go. I mean, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun, and no one is happier than when you're done installing their light. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, you really change the, the atmosphere of their home. You bring family and friends, they're all coming over and just to celebrate the holidays. But it's an experience that you're selling. But the guys that work for me, it's fun and i got one guy i'd say he gets more tips than anyone i've ever had work for me and guys just love him all the customers even though it's fun doing the christmas lights i would still say everyone at some point almost at a breaking point because it gets a little over stress yeah. yeah christmas lights get you to your stress limits they get worn out and burnt down and i'll tell you another thing that wears you out is for us when you get into the christmas business it becomes so commercialized and you're making the Christmas experience for every family but yours. Like you see the smiling faces of this person's family and the smiling faces for that person's family and you just made their Christmas and you just made their Christmas and you start asking yourself, when is it my turn? because I'm never at home. I'm not even with my family hardly at all. I'm working so much. When is it my turn to have Christmas? Because I love Christmas and I'm making Christmas for everyone. I mean everyone. And you're doing it like on a national level. You're making Christmas for everyone. But the selfish person says, when is it my turn? You know what I mean? Do you feel like that? Yeah, it definitely is stressful. And it feels to the point it's unbearable. It's like, I don't know if I can keep doing this every year. But when you get the week before Christmas, like everything really does start to wind down. Time to hang out with your family. And especially the week after, we just take a week off between Christmas to New Year's. And oh, don't. yeah. You're listening to Fred Zimmerman on Kingdom Radio. Yeah, Laura and I take off the week before Christmas and the week after Christmas. It's like the eye of the storm. It's the one time that we find peace in the season before takedown. And I, you know, taking down lights really isn't too difficult. The only problem is you don't get paid for it. There's just money going out yeah. the window while you're taking yeah. it down. Yeah, you've already but been paid it, for it, but you forgot about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you look at the list of houses you got to take down, it's like, oh, man. But anyway, it's part of the job. That's very important because a lot of people don't realize that's part of the job. They put the lights up and then quit answering the phone for customers. And I think that's why the training is so important to realize the money that you received. I know it's Christmas time and I know that you're looking at your bank account like, man, I got all this money. But you also have to think like a business person and say, hold on. This right here is for taking lights down. And when you take lights down, there may be problems and damage and there's more expenditures that come out of, you know, the takedown process than just taking down the lights. I mean, it never stops with, you know, hey, this happened. Hey, that happened. Did you know we put hot glue on stucco? And you're like, what? Who did that? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You still got to fix this and that. So there's a lot more responsibilities after the lights are put up, you know, especially in the takedown process. You're listening to Fred Zimmerman on Kingdom Radio. So every year I got like amazing customers because my list keeps growing of all these customers I love to work for. And then I let go of one customer here, one customer there. So you keep getting all these amazing customers. And I, I actually get messages from installers in my city. It's like, hey, did you ever install this person's license? I was like, oh, yeah. It's like, do you have a problem getting paid for them? It's like, yeah, actually, I, I did. That's why I don't work for them anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they're doing it to someone else. It's just kind of funny. Yeah. We've gotten a few of those. We have, we have quite we've had a, quite a few of those. <laughs> You're like, I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you work with Brother Billy, the pastor of that church? And you're like, yes, we sure did. Is there a reason why you took all the lights <laughs> off the church and gave him his money back? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, he goes, well, I'm not going to put up with it if there's going to be a problem. I was like, well, look, I don't want to, you know, you have your own experience, but we put the lights on the church, a church. Then we took the lights off the church and gave them their money back. And you're thinking, what did you do that for? I thought you were a Christian company. But if you were behind the scenes, you're like, man, it, it's it's more than we could bear. Yeah, That was like the most extreme example I could give you. Oh, my gosh. It was 
Yeah, it called us 80 times on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, wow. Of where is my Jesus sign? And we had already had lights. I had about $6,000 worth of lights on the church already. And we did, they were just waiting for the guy to custom make this Jesus sign for them. And 80 times he called us about, where's my Jesus sign? Where's my Jesus sign? Where's my Jesus sign? And I was like, dude. I'll have it to you in three days. I need three days. And he called me like 80 times a day, even on Thanksgiving Day. And I was like, look, dude, yeah, I need you to leave me alone. My phone is ringing off the hook. I don't have time for this. I don't even care about this. You know, I'm, I'm doing you a favor because I know we're the only ones that are doing it. And I want to do it for you. But I can't have you calling me 80 times a day. And then he's having every single person in his church calling. And then I was like, look, dude, I'm just going to take whatever we did. I'm just going to take it back. I know you need Jesus, but you don't need the sign. You need the real thing, bro. And <laughs> I, I don't want to do any more business with you guys. And please don't have anyone from your church. I don't want anyone from your church to ever contact me ever again. And he was like, I can't believe you said that. I was like, and then he drove, remember he, he drove to our house with a bag full of cash. And he said, no, I need the Jesus sign. And I said, my friend. You can see right here that I have it already put together. It's already done, but I cannot sell it to you. We can't do business with you guys. And this is the church. And, it, you know, when you're reading the Bible, you read about the end days and you look about all these troubles that you'll see, but you're not seeing it in the world. You're seeing it in the church is where you'll see these things. And for us, that was very difficult for a Christian company. We're making Jesus signs to say that this church can't do business with the church. But, you know, that's the reality of being in business. Because, you know, part of being a Christian, too, is you have to be a good steward. So what yes. God gives you, you have to manage it. Yeah. And it's not just like being nice and uh, having the fruit of the Spirit. But if you're mismanaging everything God gives you and you're not being a good steward, he's not going to give you more. So you can figure out how to manage what you already got. You're listening to Fred Zimmerman on Kingdom Radio. A lot of people don't know. They say, oh, Fred. Fred Zimmerman and Ron Roby, they're friends and they talk. And I was like, yeah, we do. And a lot of our conversations, one of my favorite one is when we're talking about conflict resolution. And I hear a lot of people, it's like Christmas lights and hurt feelings is a mutual friend of ours likes to refer to our business as. I like to look at it in a different light because to me it's Christmas. I mean, I love Christmas, but there's going to be conflict in business and there's going to be conflict in Christmas because it's such a competitive business. But dealing with conflict resolution as a business owner and a Christian business owner, it's tough, man. I have not figured that out. I struggle with it all the time. And that's why I really appreciate every time we have conversations because you shed a lot of light with us and have become a mentor. I know you said, hey, man, I'm not your mentor. I don't know what you're talking about. But you are because you're a brother in Christ. When I'm calling and I have a lot of questions and I'm kind of upset about a situation, you shed a lot of positive light and you kind of turn me in the right direction. And I appreciate that. Is there any other advice that you'd like to give maybe for someone listening that's in a similar situation? Well, I mean, the longer you're alive, like, people are going to do your own. It's just part of life. And how you respond to it is really the most important thing because people are going to hurt you and sometimes they actually intentionally do it. And that's really a shock when they intentionally do it. But majority of the time it's there for themselves and they just kind of stepped on you to get to where they're going and they didn't really put a lot of thought into what they're doing. But the biggest thing is to maintain your own right spirit because if you get bitter, you're not going anywhere yeah. in life. Like you can't move on. You're listening to an exclusive interview with Fred Zimmerman on Kingdom Radio. When you see someone that's done you wrong, end up something bad happens to them, the Bible warns you not to rejoice about it. Yeah. Because if the Lord may end up repenting over it. Who knows? It may backfire on you. Yes. So it's never good to see bad things happen to someone, even if they've done you wrong before. I mean, I don't want to see bad things really happen to anyone. I like it when God blesses me. I don't really like it when he's disciplining me. I don't want to have to see other people go through it, too. You know, that's the kind of thing where it's like, you don't need to right those wrongs. Let him do his work. You just do your work because, trust me, I was telling Laura earlier, I'm the furthest thing from perfect. I mean, the furthest thing. And I have plenty of work to do to improve myself of where I think I need to be. So, you know, who am I to judge someone else who's in the same you know, path of trying to be a better version of themselves every day. So we're all working through it. I just think, you know, in the Christmas business, brothers like us can come together. And I think that's a positive thing and a positive trend that we can set for future business owners that are coming into the business. I think it's a great example that we can set in the country um, as we're moving forward into 2022. You're listening to Fred Zimmerman on Kingdom Radio. Yeah, and if, if someone's mad at me, you usually can try to figure out why. If you're honest, I mean, at least with myself, I usually find a little bit of truth of what they're saying. Come on, like Fred. Nobody's mad at you. Let's be honest. 
no, I mean, people definitely get mad at me. Uh, there's usually something you can work on in that. I mean, it helps make you a better person, even your enemies. Well, everyone I talk to speaks very highly of you. And one of your biggest fans I know lives in Omaha, Nebraska. Are you familiar with this guy? Yeah, I think so. You know, if I ever met a man that had pom-poms, Augie Roper, definitely. It was like Fred Zimmerman. That's my guy. And he was telling me last night. And you two coming together. I mean, Augie just seems that's like a match made in heaven. And maybe he's right. Psalms 23. I mean, that's really the key to getting through rough situations. But That was great. Like your wife said, favor is not fair. And that ultimately is right. Favor's not fair because when you're walking with the Lord and you're doing things His way, you may lose out like in the exact moment and be like, man, if I do it God's way, man, it's, I know what I'm supposed to do. If I forgive this person, like I was suing this guy, I was going to make a bunch of money off him because he's clearly in the wrong, but if I just forgive him, I'm going to lose all that. But if you know that, that you're not supposed to take a brother to court, is what the Bible says, and so you just do things God's way, like, yeah, in the moment you may lose out, but in the long run, like favor's not fair. God will end up promoting you somewhere else, and something bad may never happen to that person that did you wrong. But you're so busy that God's promoting you and opening other doors for you that you forget about what the person did to you. Yeah. Yeah. So. You're listening to Fred Zimmerman on Kingdom Radio. And the fact that you're nice is like the heaping hot coals. That is. That really is. That you're heaping hot coals upon their head, yes. and you're like. Well, God, can't we just heat the hot coals up on their head right now and just skip the whole being nice to them? <laughs> yeah, you have to be nice to them. And then they'll realize, I was being mean to them trying to engage in a fight. Like, I gave him the first punch, and I know he's going to punch me back, and I'm wanting the, to fight. But I gave the first punch, he turned the other cheek, and he said something nice to me, and that's not how I expected it. And he took the high road, and now as a man, I'm reflecting... I should have done that too, and I didn't, and it's a heaping hot coals of shame on my head that he's the better man than me. And it's really from just being nice and not engaging in conflict, just avoiding conflict, following God. Like you were saying yesterday, it's not about what you say about yourself, it's about what other people say about you. That's what defines you. And really, it's not what other people say, it's, it's about what God says about you. That's the important part. What other people say well, about you is really doesn't matter. If you're bragging about yourself and all this stuff you can do, like, that's not as important as what other people, like Google, like, we're reviews now. People trust reviews. Like, what yeah. people say about you is usually a lot more true than what you say about yourself. So, And Google's a great point because for people, it's easy for them to say something bad about you and leave a bad review. When someone feels offended, they feel like it's their obligation to give you a bad review. But when someone has a great experience, it's very difficult for people to say something nice about you. They don't see the importance of saying nice things, but they definitely see the importance of saying bad things about you. So Google reviews is a great example, or just reviews in general, and finding a way for people to engage with you and say nice things about you is a lot more difficult. But it's easy to do something wrong and have something say something bad to you. I mean, they'll tell everyone they know. But saying good things about you is not as easy. It's a, it's a whole other level of respect. It's just not good to talk about how good your business is, but it's better if other people want to talk about how good your business is. So. Yeah, that's, just, what, that's what Paul said. No, I could boast. You know what I'm saying? But if you're going to boast about anything, boast about your relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't boast about all these other things, you know, and don't say that you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Say, if it's your will, I'm going to do this tomorrow and I'm going to go to this place and I'm going to accomplish these things in business. And if you're going to brag about something, brag about your relationship with me. Amen. And that's all the time we have today with Fred Zimmerman. And if you'd like some more information about the things that Fred does, you can check him out on Facebook on Christmas Light Contractors. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, you've been some pretty good clips show lately. I know we got Fred Zimmerman. <laughs> so I mean, how how big can you possibly get? That's the celebrity of celebrity, a lister, <laughs> Fred Zimmerman. <laughs>